Hey guys, it's DID Choi, and I'm finally back with another sample library video. There's been so many vlogs and、uh, just life changes in my life so far, but today we're going to be looking at a new trumpet library. Didn't expect that, did you?、Uh, I didn't expect it either. It, I just came across it on the forums, on Facebook. It turns out about a month ago, as of filming this video, a company called Norland? 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 Something like that. They released a free solo trumpet for the full version of Contact, obviously, because licensing and stuff. But yeah, it's free as long as you have Contact. It seems to me like it's some kind of a mix of modeling and sampling, possibly. Or maybe it's just because they record it in a drier, smaller space and then use IRs. But it kind of has that similar sound characteristic that I associate with modeling. And the programming is quite fantastic, actually. And it feels really good. So, it is about a two point something gigabyte instrument for the full version of Contact. They have 5,700 plus samples. It's performance focused, so there's no key switches, but there are different types of articulations. There's legato, staccato, staccatissimo. The staccato, you can vary the amount of length using the time machine function. And if you play above a certain velocity, it will give you a marcato articulation. There's five different mic positions at various distances, and they have a modeled vibrato, which lets you customize how long it takes before the vibrato kicks in. So maybe you want like a do kind of thing. <laughs> My singing is kind of weird, but yeah, you could have like a 1.5 second delay before the vibrato kicks in. You can control the depth of the vibrato as well as the rate of the vibrato, so it's highly customizable and expressive sounding. And it's fairly convincing. These guys apparently are trumpet players that wanted to create an instrument that properly represented the trumpet. So I'm sure they know what a trumpet is supposed to sound like, and it seems that they definitely do. They also have 14 modeled mutes, which I guess they're using some kinds of IRs and filters and stuff to create a muted sound, and they seem to sound great too. I don't really use mutes apart from like straight mute and maybe Harman mute often, so this video won't be touching on mutes at all. But as you saw with the title, I was just curious how it would stack up against, you know, more professional or expensive trumpet libraries. As a quick note, of course, all the libraries that I'm going to talk about, other than the Norland, are libraries that include a lot of other instruments, usually the whole brass section in the case of. Most of these instruments, except for sample modeling, which you could buy the trumpet separately, but then again, you get you know, three trumpets a German trumpet and like a flugelhorn, I believe. So take that into account when considering the value. So maybe all of these trumpets, if you sort of divide it up, are going to be around like the $60 range. That's totally just off the top of my head. I have no idea if that's accurate or not. So, today I have two examples for you. The first example being the famous Mahler 5 excerpt. Obviously, it's not going to be as good and honed in as you know, professional trumpet players' interpretation. This is just me playing a mock up, sight reading the excerpt, and trying my best. But each of these、uh, examples are played in separately for each instrument, trying to bring out the best advantages of each. And they'll be equally musical or non musical when compared to the real thing. So, first, let's look at the Norland solo trumpet. Depending on the length of the note you play, it decides if it's gonna be a long note or a short. I have these like car repair guys outside my window. I don't know why they're in front of my window. But they've been revving their engine and they have this weird ding sound going. It's kind of driving me nuts. You done yet? 
Stop the engine. So the really nice thing about the Norlin trumpet is that depending on the length of the note you play, it determines automatically if it's a long note or a short note, which is great for performances. The shorts are not velocity sensitive, which means uh, they follow the mod wheel, which I found, at least for this Mahler example, a lot easier to control because, you know, ba -ba -ba -ba, they should all be at a consistent or a continuous volume level rather than, you know, jumping around between velocity and modulation. You can also switch between the default staccatissimo and the staccatos by using the sustain pedal. So if you want the longer staccatos, you press the sustain. If you don't need that, you just play as normal and you'll get staccatissimos. Especially for this excerpt, it was really helpful to have the marcados and the legatos and you know all the various articulations and it was actually very easy to play. It was the first example I recorded, but I think it was one of the easiest instruments to play and get a really convincing Mahler result. All right, now looking at the sample modeling trumpet, for this example, I use the German trumpet rather than the default trumpet because I kind of prefer the tone of the German trumpet and since it's Mahler, I thought it was appropriate. I've made many videos on it before with sample modeling is bone dry, so I did add a Todd AO Space Designer's uh, impulse response, but I do have the dry turned up quite a bit and here it is. Next up is the Aaron Venture trumpet. I'm just using the regular trumpet one here, although I did change the mic mix just a tiny bit to match the, uh, the sound of the other instruments where I pulled down the close ju just a little bit and boosted the ambience a little bit more. But other than that, it's basically straight out of the box. With this one and the previous sample modeling, depending on the velocity of the note you play, the attack changes, which means for the short notes, sometimes I didn't get quite the attack I wanted, so I had to go back and manually change the velocities of most of the shorts to kind of fit the interpretation that I was going for. So here it is. And next up is the Cinematic Studio Brass Trumpet, which is probably one of my go-to libraries, which I use the most often. Now we're coming away from modeling technology and more traditional sample based with key switching articulations and all that stuff. So the way this one was recorded, I played everything in using the Marcato patch with the repetition overlays turned on, which meant I got nice shorts and nice longs but that would never really pass as a final product. You would have to go back and massage it a little bit. So using the articulation sets, if you don't know what articulation sets are, you're missing out, check the video up here. I went back and changed the articulations of all the shorts into either uh, repetitions or staccatissimos. The ba ba ba, the quarter note triplet, used the sforzando uh, articulation, I believe. And most of the long notes, I ended up using the regular marcado, not no legato, just the marcado patch, which is one of my favorite patches, by the way, in all of the Cinematic Studio Brass line. 
And again, I had to mess with the velocities of the shorts because the way I played them on the keyboard don't necessarily have the continuity that I want for the phrasing that I wanted. And they're back. So let's listen to CSB. Okay, and finally, I have Cinebrass Pro Solo Trumpet. This instrument is probably the oldest of this lineup. This also represents the more sample-based technologies, but it also has much less articulation options than Cinematic Studio Brass, because it only has the one long patch and three shorts. So the shorts are okay, but the longs, you know, there's not as much variance with the marcado and the long. But with this one, again, I did the same method where I played it in with just the longs patch. Because there wasn't a short overlay patch or anything like that, it was a little more difficult to get timed, which meant when I was editing afterwards, I did more quantizing and actually like nudging the notes here and there. And again, I used articulation sets, switching between the eighth note short and the quarter note short for the quarter note triplets and the regular long patch. I had to go in and disable legato in the settings because I didn't want any uh, legato transitions. This was supposed to be just like a, a longs patch or a marcado patch in this instant. So this is Cinebrass Pro. Okay, so the Mahler was the more triumphant, heroic trumpet with the kind of grandeur that you a lot of people associate with trumpet. But trumpet is also a very lyrical instrument. So for the second example, well, I played in one of my own pieces from 2014, I believe. Uh, it's a very old piece, but I love the melody. It kind of just came to me one night when I was trying to go to sleep. So anyways, I did a more lyrical legato example. So let's take a look first at the Norland solo trumpet. So the legato transitions are quite good. I think the tone in general, because it's using IRs and relying on that to kind of bring the space in, kind of like sample modeling and air adventure and infinite brass, the tone is a little less convincing for me, but the legato-ness and the phrasing and the general musicianship that the instrument can provide is quite nice and convincing. So for solo stuff, it can really shine. Next up is the sample modeling trumpet. The musicianship is also very nice. The tone, again, I never really could get sample modeling to sound like a trumpet because it's recorded in the anechoic chamber. I don't have like expensive reverb plugins, but with whatever reverb solutions I did use, I could never quite find the sound I wanted, but it still sounds passable and it's 
you know, very expressive. Next up is Aaron Venture, Infinite Brass. Yeah, so this one for me, while it does have that model character, I find that just the way it responds to your fingers is a little more laggier than the other two instruments, which makes it a little bit harder to play, which might kind of hinder your musicianship. But then again, you can always go back and edit it again. And also the tone doesn't feel quite as rich and mellow as a legato trumpet should sound, in my opinion. If you have any tips for me to make it sound better, because I haven't been too successful with Air Adventure stuff, uh, let me know in the comments, please. Uh, next up is my favorite CSB trumpet. Cinematic Studio Brass is a little weaker for the kind of mellow legato stuff because the lowest dynamic layer included is a mezzo piano, I believe. They don't have the pianissimo dynamics. Of course, you can you know, get it to that volume, but the timbre isn't quite right. So I find for these kinds of passages, you know, if it's a denser orchestration, then it might cut through the mix a little better and it might sound nice and rich, but if it's more exposed, maybe it's not the best option. And finally, we have Cinebrass. Cinebrass Pro uh, Solo Trumpet. Yeah, so Cinebrass, this time I used the True Legato Pro patch that's included rather than the Articulations patch. And it sounds, you know, decent. You can definitely tell it is a little bit older. I thought Cinebrass was a lot more successful for the heroic fanfare stuff. And it is a little weaker for the piano tender moments. But yeah, I mean, just compared five different libraries and... I think each had their own advantages and disadvantages, you know, workflow-wise, sound-wise, playability-wise. But this Norland solo trumpet, for free, assuming you have contact, I mean, wow. I don't know why it's free, like, it's definitely better quality than any Spitfire Labs or Sign Factory or even Spitfire Originals, I would say. It could easily be like a $60, $100, $150 instrument, but uh, they've been nice enough to provide it for free. So if you can donate on their page, you know, they probably would definitely appreciate that. I think they wrote on the site that they worked on it for about a year. One instrument for a year, that's a lot of work. And I think the instrument was definitely worth all of that work because it works so well and it's very playable. I think it's a lot easier to play than sample modeling and Air Adventure, which are kind of notorious for being very playable because it kind of uses the hybrid of having different articulations and the kind of modeling-ish technology. I don't know if it's actually modeling or not, but it has that character, that feel of playing and maybe that convolution reverb sound. So I don't know, maybe the founders, if they watch this video or something, they can let us know in the comments, but yeah, uh, bravo Norland. All of these other instruments are awesome as well. I mean, this was kind of a total impromptu video when I downloaded the instrument and thought, oh, this could definitely go head to head against all of my other instruments. And now I'm realizing I spent way too much money on brass. If I could only recommend one, I would probably recommend CSB, at least for my style of writing and working. I'm sure some people can't bear having to go back and, you know, fiddle with things, articulations and stuff to get realistic results, but, you know, to each their own. So what did you think of these instruments? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, leave a like, you know, subscribe, all of those things really help out. I'm not making money off this at all, it's just for fun, but uh, the encouragement really helps and it's great to give back to the community where I learned so much from. Check out all my other videos on sample libraries and also if you're interested in the NYU Screen Scoring Masters program, you know, subscribe and follow me on my vlogs because it's what I'm doing right now and it basically takes up my whole life at the moment. So anyways, this has been DID Choi and I'll see you in the next one.